If you've ever watched Jurassic Park, you know that amber is a remarkable substance. Formed from tree resin that has hardened and fossilized over millions of years, deposits of amber often include the remains of various little creatures that became ensnared in these sticky avalanches. Dinosaur DNA contained within mosquitoes has not yet been found, and almost certainly never will unfortunately, as these molecules don't last that long. However, some unbelievable things have nevertheless been discovered trapped in amber. These range from beautifully preserved geckos, to bird feet, and even fluffy dinosaur tails. Another such mind-blowing amber find is a fossil that contains within it an ancient battle to the death. Found in 100 million year old amber deposits in Myanmar, this extraordinary little tomb perfectly preserves the final desperate moment of struggle between predator and prey, as a prehistoric spider is frozen in the act of attacking a wasp. Not only that, but this small piece of amber in fact includes a whole host of fascinating tiny animal interactions, including the oldest known evidence of social behavior in spiders. The piece of amber itself is only about half an inch long, and was excavated from a mine in the Hukong Valley of northern Myanmar. This mine cuts through rocks that were laid down somewhere between 97 and 110 million years ago, during a stretch of Earth's prehistory known as the Early Cretaceous, more specifically the Albion stage of the Cretaceous, when dinosaurs were dominating the terrestrial landscapes. The tree resin from which the amber originated millions of years ago was likely derived from a type of evergreen coniferous tree closely related to modern monkey puzzles, a prevalent plant during that time. The resin from this ancient tree must have poured swiftly from its source, encasing a dramatic scene on a small scale as it flowed over these Cretaceous arachnids and insects. Two spiders were trapped in this resin, and intriguingly, it appears that they were living on the same web. Various strands of spider silk can be observed within the amber tomb, a stunning discovery that parts of this 100 million year old web were preserved. Paleontologists identified both the spiders preserved here as belonging to the golden orb weaver family, a family known as Nephilidae. They found that these Nephilids in amber were members of an entirely new species to science, since they were frozen in so much detail that all the tiny limbs, body segments, and even minuscule bristles could be closely examined, revealing their uniqueness compared to other living and fossilized Nephilids. So they designated this new species as Geratonephila burmanica, meaning Old Nephila from Burma. Since they can be identified as golden orb weavers, this also tells us something else rather intriguing about the behaviors preserved in this amber fragment. The two spiders are both males, but in modern Nephilid spiders, the males actually inhabit the webs of females. Female Nephilids are generally much larger than the males, and in modern species, multiple males will often be found living on one female's web, attending to her and sharing her food. So this strongly implies that the males in this amber were probably living on a female's web, a truly astonishing instance of sociality in spiders 100 million years ago, showing that this behavior, at least in the golden orb weavers, evolved as far back in time as the Cretaceous period, during the age of the dinosaurs. Spider sociality is an example of convergent evolution, as it evolved independently a number of times across different lineages of these arachnids, such as in tangleweb spiders, hackled orb weavers, certain funnel weavers, and others. However, thanks to this spectacular amber discovery, we now understand that in golden orb weavers, it has been a long-standing behavioral adaptation. Sharing a web with other members of their own species offers numerous benefits for the little spiders. By tolerating one another and keeping aggression and cannibalism to a minimum, they can have multiple individuals maintain the web and process the food items that become trapped on it. This allows them to produce larger webs that cover a greater area and so, in turn, they can capture more prey. Modern Nephilids will also have a mixture of adults and juveniles on the shared webs, and given that one of the males in this Cretaceous Amber piece, the one that's attacking the wasp, is indeed a juvenile, it appears that this is another spider behavior that had its origins more than 100 million years ago. The web strands encased in the amber show signs that this silk was particularly effective at trapping unfortunate prey. The strands feature droplets that would have been incredibly viscous and sticky, and amazingly, when the scientists examined these droplets closely, they could see lots of aerial plankton attached to them. 
These planktonic objects, blown about by the wind, included pollen, spores, and particles of dust, which then became stuck in these spiders' webs. The presence of this plankton also suggests another interesting aspect of behaviour, which is again shared by living Nephilid spiders, namely, that these webs were likely not regularly rebuilt. Instead, these spiders simply repaired damaged sections, allowing many parts of the web to persist for a while, accumulating all these particles that were blown into them. And then of course, there are the final victims of these golden orb weavers, preserved just as they were trapped 100 million years ago. There are two unfortunate little insects that fell prey to the Cretaceous spiders. Over by the adult Geratonophila spider, there's a Neuropteran, a net-winged insect. This critter had been partially wrapped up when the resin flowed over the web, and considering its proximity to the adult, it was presumably this individual that did it. The other spider victim is the wasp, which is so close to the juvenile Geratonophila that three of the spider's legs are actually in contact with it. This wasp is similarly preserved in exquisite detail, with all the body segments, perfectly intact wings, and even individual sections of the tiny antennae visible in this animal. Again, thanks to this preservation, the scientists studying the amber were able to identify it as a new species in the wasp superfamily, Platygastroidea, a grouping of mostly very tiny parasitoid wasps that are still found alive today. They gave it the name Cascoschelio incassus, meaning Old Schelio, which is a modern platygastroid wasp name, in a spider's web. The wasp must have got caught in this web mere seconds before the resin trapped it, and quite literally moments before the spider began to wrap it up and feed on it. As one of the paleontologists who studied this amber specimen stated, this was the wasp's worst nightmare, and it never ended. It is indeed quite a horrifying thought, really, to realise that this animal was trapped here in this sticky web, sensing the spider approach it as it prepared to end its life and feast upon it. And then suddenly, another sticky death trap washes over them both, freezing them in that moment forever. A wasp's nightmare to be sure, but also a paleontologist's dream come true, to find such a spectacular fossil. The odds of uncovering a fossil preserving this precise moment and sequence of events are just mind-boggling to consider. But before you feel too bad for this wasp, you should know that the reason it's called a parasitoid is because this group of wasps are today known to parasitize insect and spider eggs, with females laying their own eggs within the developing eggs of other organisms, where they grow and kill the hosts. So, as the paleontologists also state, in that context, the attack by the spider, an orb weaver, might be considered payback. Additionally, the net-winged insect, or Neuropteran, which is also preserved wrapped in spider silk, is another example of an insect known to parasitize and prey on spiders, or at least some of their larvae do. Many Neuropteran larvae are predators that possess modified mouthparts through which they inject venom into their prey and subsequently suck out their victims' fluids. One family of Neuropterans are even exclusive predators of spider eggs, and employ a feeding strategy known as spider boarding. This entails attaching themselves to an adult spider and remaining there, feeding on the internal fluids of the spider without killing them until an egg sac is made and the larvae can enter it and feed on the eggs within. They have even been observed to swap spider hosts if a male host ends up getting cannibalized by a female, and they can switch during the spider mating process too. These are some very dedicated insects. Incredibly, some amber fossils have even been discovered that include Neuropteran larvae associated with various types of spiders, indicating that this is an ancient life strategy that has clearly been effective for these insects for a very long time. This includes a 50 million year old instance of a Neuropteran larva sitting on a spider found in Baltic amber, as well as another piece of amber from Myanmar, dating to about 100 million years ago, in which a tiny larva is preserved right next to a spider's leg, its claws grasping around the limb. It's a testament to the wonderful and sometimes pretty damn brutal world of invertebrate life that this amber fossil essentially preserves three different species from three different lineages, all of which are known to consume one another in some form. The complex spider-eat-wasp and neuropteran-eat-spider and also wasp-eat-spider microcosm that exists today clearly has a truly ancient heritage, and it's fascinating to see this exemplified in this incredible amber tomb. I can't overstate just how spectacular this tiny piece of amber truly is. 
Contained within just half an inch of material, there is so much valuable data that has informed us about how prehistoric spiders behaved and how their sociality has evolved. Along with this thrilling final moment between predator and prey, that's now frozen in time for eternity. Although it's at a very small scale, it must be one of the most dramatic fossil finds ever made. And that's what I love about amber fossils. Since these animals became trapped in the resin so rapidly at times, they provide us with a marvellous snapshot of life so many millions of years ago. And of course, I also love learning about invertebrates. These tiny creatures are living in a world all of their own, yet they are so fascinating and have such extraordinary lifestyles. As someone who's generally focused more on vertebrate life, both in my own research and when making videos, I'm often struck by just how bizarre and sometimes quite alien these animals can appear. So it's always a lot of fun to learn about insects, spiders, and other extraordinary lineages of invertebrates. If you're interested in learning about some more amazing amber fossil discoveries, then be sure to check out the other video I've done on this topic. And if you'd like to see more videos on amber-related fossils, then please do let me know in the comments. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my other channel, Seven Days of Science. Over on this channel, my co-presenters and I make weekly videos covering all the most fascinating science news of the past week. So if you'd like a good way to keep up to date with the latest discoveries, you might like what we do over there. We also have a Patreon page where you can support us in return for some fun bonus content. And we've just started up an email, 7 at gmail.com, where we encourage researchers to contact us if they'd like us to feature their work, or if anyone in the audience would like to provide us with feedback on how we can improve the show. Please do like this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and be sure to press that bell icon so you don't miss our next upload, and so you can learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all.